Okay, let's start. Hello everyone and welcome to our quarterly product update meeting. We are recording this session for you to catch up on at uh, your convenience or for those unable to attend. Your feedback and questions are very important to us, so we encourage you to drop your questions in the chat as we go along in the presentation. Um, we'll make sure to address all of them. And now, without further ado, let's jump into our agenda and see what was our focus area in quarter two. Um, in the second quarter, we focused on simplifying the process of importing data from modules to make it even more effective. Uh, we also wanted to facilitate the process of creating and testing email campaign templates uh, thanks to new template builder, which will certainly improve the quality of your work. Um, we have also introduced new integrations uh, with external tools from Google Ads and WhatsApp. Um, we also focused on improving the user experience by introducing the functions of cloning uh, really recommendation campaigns between different workspaces, which will sig sig significantly speed up and improve everyday work on the platform. And finally, we focused on improving the prediction and recommendation modules to make them more precise and effective. OK, uh, so our agenda for today, uh, we will start with automation, then we go to communication and we will finish with AI products. Uh, so I will pass the mic to Daniel. All right, thank you, Echo. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, huge pleasure to be with you today. Uh, my name is Camille, and I'm responsible for uh, um, automation framework and Cinerize. And uh, today I'm here with a feature that might be not connected with automation on the first side. However, it is. So let me introduce Simple Imports Wizard, our extension when it comes to import data to Cinerize. Uh, if you remember, a few meetings ago, I presented automation capabilities uh, in data processing and transformation area. And it's extremely useful tool if you need to build a process of data exchange between other systems and Cinerize. What's more, with all capabilities and flexibility with Jinja offers, it is almost limitless when it comes to transform data. But what if I'd like to make a real simple single import without any transformation. That's why we created a Simple Imports Wizard. Now you can initiate data import directly from the list, which relates to specific data type. So when you are in Profiles module, you can import new profiles or events or, for example, transactions. If you're in Promotions submodule, you're able to import new promotions directly from the list. When you combine it with a really simple few steps interface, you will see that importing data has never been as easy as it is now. OK, let's take a look on the key elements of this feature. First, upload. If you have uh, data which fits to Cinerize requirements, uh, you can upload your file and check if all columns split it correctly. However, let's be honest, life is much, much, life is much uh, more complicated. Uh, in case when you need to change names of columns in the file, um, in, in, in your input file, uh, you can adjust them to Cinerize requirements using simple mapping. The system will suggest all required attributes and parameters here. And the last thing, monitoring. Data import is crucial business action, so you need to know that everything goes fine. Uh, with statuses for each stage of import, you always know what's going on. All right, now you know all about this new feature, so it's time to see how it works. We are in profile mo uh, module and we'll initiate a new import. Here you can import a profile uh, events and transactions. For a demo purpose, we will uh, import um, profiles. Uh, and this, in the next step, uh, our configurator asks us uh, what kind of data you'd like to uh, import and how you'd, you'd like to deliver this data. If you, for example, uh, want to create a data exchange workflow, you can use import in automation option. But in this particular case, we'll import single uh, single file from, uh, from our device. Okay, we can go to uh, another step. 
Here you will find an uh, example file. It is quite uh, important thing for, uh, for every single user because it shows how your data should look to make import to Cinerize without uh, any, any troubles. We'll use this file to import it to Cinerize. Here you can, of course, uh, customize your file markup. And the most important thing here, uh, preview your upload data to see uh, if, uh, for example, all columns split it correctly. All right, we're ready to move to another step. And another step is mapping. Uh, in the left column, you will see all your columns from your input file. And on the right side, you have uh, desired uh, parameters or attributes. Of course, systems suggest you what kind of parameters or attribute you have to use. You can also skip some uh, some columns. For example, if you have uh, much more data than you want to uh, import to Cinerize, you can skip uh, a particular uh, column. For demo purpose, we'll do any mapping here. So it means that if we go to to another uh, to another step, you will see that all uh, input data will be imported as it is. OK, so we can run our import. And the last stage of our import is monitoring uh, model. Uh, here you will find uh, all stages uh, or import stages with uh, information about uh, success or fails. Uh, and you can also go uh, from this uh, view to list of imports. Here you will find all, uh, all imports uh, initiated in Cinerize in one, in one place with every single stage with user logs to troubleshoot your import and with uh, uh, mapping for specific particular uh, import. I would like to uh, show you that we are in data management uh, module in data import subsection. Uh, you can also initiate import from this specific view. So here you can import any type of data you'd like to. So profiles, events, transactions, promotions, and vouchers. All right, but one more thing. Uh, I've mentioned that there's another path in our wizard. So let's find out what you can do with it. Uh, I will choose profiles here. And in this, uh, this use case, we'll choose uh, import in automation to see what's happened now. I have to uh, I have to define uh, what uh, the way that I feed uh, my automation, my workflow, uh, and how I will do it. Uh, in this particular case, we will use SFTP server, and we can click on uh, go to workflow. As you can see, system brings us to uh, automation workflow with predefined template of uh, of a whole workflow. You can uh, just uh, configure and run to uh, run your first data exchange uh, work with Cinerize. All right, thank you for your attention. Uh, that's uh, all from my side. So I'll pass the microphone to Claudia. She's got exciting news from the, for you uh, connected with uh, communication area. Claudia, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. OK, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Claudia. And in Sunrise, I'm responsible for the area of communications and integration. And today I would like to tell you about a few of our projects that we've been working on during the last quarter. Uh, also, I would like to show you a short demo of how those features uh, work in the platform. So let's start from the project that we developed and implement in the different modules every quarter. So about the new template builder that we recently implemented in email campaigns. And looking backwards, we started from designing the builder with variables itself. And our goal was to create the tool that will streamline the process of creating and testing templates uh, that will reduce the entry thresholds to this module. Um, and of course, will enable the execution of campaigns even for users without the technical skills. And that's why we created a tool that enables to define for each template the dedicated configuration form 
thanks to which each user can change and adjust any template elements without the need um, to dig into the code. So first we implemented this feature in email, uh, in in-app and dynamic content modules. And during the last quarter, uh, we introduced this to email campaigns. Uh, also, at the same time, we refreshed the layout. Uh, we made it consistent with the rest of the platform uh, and we made a few optimizations and UX changes. At the same time, apart from these changes, we wanted to give users um, a certain base of ready-made scenarios that they can adapt or implement like right away. And it's not only about the simple basic campaigns, but also more complex personalized ones um, containing built-in logic for handling dynamic elements of the template, such as product recommendations, abandoned cards, and so on. So we build the template libraries that we actually believe um, are the answer to those needs. And on the one hand, we have the predefined dynamic template library, uh, which contains templates with ready-made implementations of various scenarios. Um, we have product recommendations, we have abandoned cards, uh, we have products to um, similar to the last viewed. Uh, where their entire configuration boils down to choosing the exact AI campaign or aggregate from a select list. And on the other hand, we have a library of templates tailored to a specific occasions, for example, Black Friday, um, newsletter, uh, subscription um, confirmation templates, uh, which are editable with our basic drag and drop builder. And of course, they can be um, more dynamic with inserts. Uh, look, uh, looking at this topic holistically, uh, we strive to build a space in a campaigns module where templates and campaigns can be implemented by every user and where even if you have no idea for a scenario, you can be inspired by uh, predefined scenarios that you can that you just need to have the willing to uh, to implement. And at this point, I wanted to go back to the topic of scenarios. As you know, we run a use case library in our help center and we are constantly supplementing it with new scenarios. Uh, finding it among others, um, examples of using the template builder. Uh, and we will now go through a video um, that shows such an example and this time using one of our predefined templates. So first we are choosing the template from the predefined library that is available, of course, on each workspace. Uh, and here you can see the uh, template with recommended products that already has logic with inserts implemented. And let's go through the different functionalities during the process. So first um, there is an opportunity to check how this template appears on different screen sizes. Uh, and of course, at first you cannot recognize the exact message that will be delivered to customers, but when you choose the certain profile and make the preview, you can see um, like the beautiful email uh, that uh, this user will receive. And after that, you can play with the configuration form and adjust this template to your needs. So starting from the number of products in a row through playing with colors and buttons. And this actually gives the very big uh, var variety of possible layouts and functions, um, like for just one template. So we are talking about the broadly understood area of communications here, in which the template builder is only one of elements. Uh, and in the last quarter, we also focused on other aspects, uh, on expanding the possibilities of communication with customers with the new channels. Uh, so we have implemented integration with WhatsApp. So all the summarized functionalities that you can think of, such as AI recommendations, predictions, analytics, combined with the behavioral data that you gather from various and with automation capabilities. Uh, so you can use all these in this integration and send personalized messages to customers 
and build with them uh, the experience of bonding, um, the fact that you really know the needs of your customers and that you are able to meet them. And in addition to WhatsApp, we also implemented integration with Google Ads, uh, which um, using the same functionalities allowed you to uh, build groups of recipients of, uh, of advertising campaigns in Google Ads uh, based on the data collected in Sunrise. So in order to better visualize these possibilities, I will use an example. Um, so we are able to bid an advertising campaign in Google Ads directed to users who, according to Sunrise cal calculations, have a low willingness to buy a given product or group of products. So uh, this and other examples uh, are, of course, described in this use case library I mentioned. So I encourage you to read them to get familiar with them. And that was basically my last update for today. Thank you very much for listening. And I will pass the floor to Michał. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michał Pastuszak. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, senior product manager at Synerize, primarily responsible for a product area. So uh, mainly recommendations, uh, personalized search, uh, uh, predictions module, uh, time optimizer. And today I will have a pleasure to, to present our recent advancements uh, in that areas. Um, uh, but uh, before before I will go anywhere uh, further, I would uh, have to admit one or no, even two things. Uh, firstly, that I'm very much impressed of of, of the features we have delivered uh, this week and uh, this uh, this quarter, last quarter actually. And I will do my best, try to do my best uh, to to present also my uh, features um, uh, with uh, the similar pace to, to my uh, colleagues. Uh, and the second thing is actually that it's very, uh, I've got to, I've got to tell you that it's very hard to, to, select, uh, mm, to select the right feature that I would like to, to present uh, on this occasion um, quarterly, uh, because you've got to pick up one to three things, uh, three most important features out of the several that, that have been delivered uh, uh, in the recent uh, quarter. So, so in this context, uh, we, I think, as a team, uh, did a try to to select these related to the, the main areas as well as were presented by in the beginning by uh, Jakub. So related to the UX improvements, related to the improvements related to the overall performance, to the uh, uh, to, to unlocking the possibilities uh, of your data coming from your data that is already stored in the Synerize. Uh, and last but not least, also unlocking the potential uh, that is sometimes uh, hidden uh, within the Synerize platform itself. So uh, moving back to to my things, uh, let's start from uh, from the cloning, uh, cloning recommendation campaigns between the workspaces. Uh, workspaces, uh, and let's uh, dive uh, right into uh, this feature. So we have actually uh, introduced this ability to clone clone recommendation campaigns across workspaces uh, in the recent uh, quarter, and this is uh, actually the feature that. From uh, uh, from the perspective of some of our users, some of our clients were uh, even perceived as a game changer for uh, from the perspective of uh, operating in multi workspace environment. So specifically, the feature which is uh, very important and very uh, let's say unlocking um, uh, from the perspective of uh, of the uh, the companies that they are operating on various markets, uh, for instance. Uh, and this feature allows you to duplicate the, the essentially duplicate the recommendation campaigns from one workspace to another just within the few clicks, uh, maintaining uh, at the same time all uh, dependencies that are uh, inherent in the recommendation campaigns and also data mapping. This means also that there is no more time consuming uh, manual uh, transfer need. 
and instead of uh, you can just uh, channel your you know the energy into you know crafting just crafting the the the, uh, the campaign strategies instead of just focusing and and wasting the time uh, on uh, manual uh, manual configuration um, so why actually we why actually we have decided to to start with this uh, with this feature firstly because it simplifies overall process of managing campaigns of course against the multiple workspaces once again this is particularly useful for the multinationals for the businesses operating across various brands various branches mm, and essentially it aids uh, in better uh, organization and coordination of your work secondly in enhance of course the productivity just by animate eliminating the need uh, to to recreate the campaigns uh, for each workspace by the way uh, this is quick uh, uh, this is a quick quest for you uh, could you could you give me a the number of the the maximum number of the the campaigns that were uh, uh, that are let's say uh, in existence uh, on one workspace. I will answer this question right away. And this is, uh, I think, from uh, as far as I remember, uh, from from the recent statistics, is uh, over 1,200 campaigns that are being run on single workspace. So this is this is a huge number. If you multiply this number, let's say by 10, uh, by 10 workspaces, 10 branches, sorry, uh, you will have uh, the number in uh in dozens um dozens thousands actually so the, so this is this is actually a huge number and if you take into consideration such numbers uh it will uh become clear that this is a huge enabler for such organization so thirdly also it uh, offers you um, uh, and helps you in um uh, gaining most callability and due to the fact of this uh, enhanced productivity also and flexibility so uh, let's maybe move uh, uh, right away and just see how does it look and feel uh, in the real life uh, so our uh, use case for today uh, hypothetical how that use case for today is um, regarding cloning several campaigns between workspaces related to different countries different branches of multinationals so the company operating on different uh, within the different countries on different uh, on different branches so let's let's see um, first of all uh, the feature is uh, available from the context menu of uh, the recommendations campaigns listing just by clicking to on the clone to workspace you will have the pop-up opening and the first thing you've got to decide about is to decide about the destination actually uh, of your um, uh, of your cloning actually so you actually you decide to which workspace you would like to clone your desired campaign so for the sake of this presentation we uh, let's assume that you would like to just to clone the campaign for the single one but you've got to remember that this is possible also to uh to clone the campaign uh to to plant many many of uh, uh workspaces at at the at, uh, uh, at once actually uh, so the second thing is you've got to decide about is the is is their item fit and analog is analog of item fit uh, uh of the uh, uh on the desired let's say this of the the, uh, the workspace that is actually the destination of your of your of your need so you've got to just to think and just to remember about that uh, you've got to be uh the similar item fit uh consisting on of the similar rather even the best if uh, possible if uh, the same items uh, uh, items or meaning the products uh, that are included in that um, uh, uh, item fit from your uh, destination workspace yeah so uh, of course of course you've got you you can you can choose two options you can you can first of all 
also decide that whether you want to 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 create a copy of your campaign or just a duplicate your campaign right away. Mm, the next thing uh, you've got to decide about is uh, to decide about. Oh, sorry, sorry, because uh, I I stopped clicking. To decide about uh, also uh, if necessary actually for for some of the campaigns like um, uh, recommendations attribute recommendation or section recommendations to decide about uh, uh, the metadata uh, catalog which is being used for the uh, for this particular uh, recommendations campaigns um, but this is not necessary in uh, um, for 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 every case actually now let's move on and the third the third uh, um, uh, the third step actually is to uh, decide about mapping of the attributes of the item things which are actually basically used um, in the filters for instance um, uh, that are used in the uh, or selected uh, in the recommendations um, the cloned recommendations campaign for instance right so so simply you get to map brand to map or similar you know uh, uh, in effect uh, parameter of your item fit right so this is the first step you've got to click of course apply and uh, since then actually you are almost ready because once you click on the cloning clone button uh, the cloning is being conducted it lasts from single seconds to, to several seconds uh, uh, usually, so it's pretty uh, pretty fast, uh, pretty fast um, uh, progress. Uh, uh, once you once the cloning is done, you can go to to the cloning logs where you can see and uh, observe whether your your cloning specific um, uh, uh, campaign cloning let's say were conducted uh, were finished actually uh, correctly if not you will have uh, you will have some uh, errors um, uh, uh, presented here mm, but at the, at the end of the day also you can use this uh, you can use this option uh, just to a check to do double check for uh, whether your uh, clone, cloning campaign were cloned, let's say correctly, right? So this is this is that, and this is actually that also uh, when it comes to the cloning. Mm, I think this is a pretty uh, useful feature, and this, the feedback that comes from from our clients actually confirms that. The second one uh, will be mm, the second feature actually that I would like to present you today. Mm, is about item uh, checking actually the item consistency and the fit status. So let's find why actually the uh, item fit consistency and the fit status, fit import status, fit import health check features uh, are essential tools for for your campaign management. So firstly, these features are uh, instrumental actually in improving uh, the quality of your data. They at the same time they ensure that your campaigns are accurately reflecting all of the items in your offering in your website, which is actually of course crucial for the success of uh, your not only AM campaigns but also of our, your overall success of the business. Uh, also by identifying and resolving discrepancies between your item feed and your item related events you can easily maintain high quality of item feed data which basically leads to more effective and accurate um, campaigns uh, secondly this feature provides you um, more efficient way to resolve the problems they allow you to quickly uh, quickly identify and resolve and address problems related to your item feeds, of course, at the same time, saving your valuable time and resources. Mm, and moreover, also they enhance your control uh, over your data because uh, the inference and the import status section provides you the, the insights uh, into import status of your feeds, mm, even including the errors encountered. 
Mm, this also allows you to very quickly and very easily in uh, monitor and resolve uh, issues that may arise during, for instance, the import or fetching of your uh, of your item feeds. Uh, in the conclusions, mm, I would say that the item feeds and import health check are not just the tools. They are your partners in monitoring the data, actually, which are actually essential to, to overall success of uh, your uh, AI campaigns, right? Because they offer you a very easy approach to uh, and possibility to monitor your uh, also data, at the same time giving you uh, the control and the flexibility. Let's check uh, and let's see how it does it look like in in the real life once again and our today's use case is regarding uh, quickly finding out uh, the items which are not existent uh, in the items feeds uh, and verify which items uh, they are actually so let's see so the the, the feature is uh, available from the engine configuration then you got to click on the top uh, status top and you will see the window with uh, two sections. Actually, the first section is related to the item consistency, uh, split it uh, into uh, into uh, events. Uh, you will have, you will see also the ratio. Oh, sorry, I will have to stop and move back. You will have also, you will, you will also see the item fits, item uh, sorry inconsistencies ratios. Mm, the summary of uh, the volumes of the item feeds. Mm, and also just by clicking on the details, for instance, you will see also the missing and inconsistent items in your data. Uh, so for instance, items that they are, mm, that can be observed on your website, but not in existent in the item feeds. So yeah, so this is this is it. And uh, apart from that, also it's possible here to um, recalculate the statistics on demand or check whether this is actually the um, the problem that has uh, just occurred, let's say within two days, or maybe this is the you know the problem that is uh, with you for for many days, like five or ten. Uh, in addition to that, also you can observe uh, whether you have some problems regarding the imports. Mm, in this case, uh, the import was uh, uh, fine, but for instance, you can uh, imagine the situation that uh, uh, you will spot in here the errors, let's say, related to the imports also, like for instance, uh, duplicated items with specific item IDs also. But of course, um, building the product as it is the Synerize, as, as I perceive, let's say the overall Synerize platform is not only about building and adding just new features, but also it's about, uh, it's about also uh, keeping up uh, the pace with the performance, right? So. So apart from the feature updates, uh, I would also would like to to share with you some significant performance improvement that we actually have done in the recent uh, quarter. Okay, so um, let's see how it looks like in in numbers. Let's say so. For instance, for our new customers, we have uh, seen an impressive uplift of uh, uh, eighteen percent. Uh, for zero shot recommendation. Quick reminder: What are the zero shot recommendations? Zero shot recommendations are recommendations that are given for the clients without behavioral, with let's say very uh, short or even without the behavioral history. So uh, again, this means that even without prior interactions of your data, our AI engines can provide you highly relevant recommendations, of course, enhancing your revenue and, and the overall user experience. In terms of the um, increasing the responsiveness, we, all have, we also have achieved some, I think, pretty nice results. 
um, related, to, for instance, to uh, 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 faster responses of uh, search and recommendation statistics. So now are from four times to even 100 times faster. This sometimes mean, uh, I would say that these numbers can be perceived sometimes as uh, even, uh, I would say, unimaginable. Uh, but in the same context, uh, we were uh, responding quite uh, slowly. And now, uh, in our opinion, and in my opinion, our statistics are far, uh, far better, far more responsive. Uh, lastly, also, we have seen uh, up to 20% of the uh, improvements in the model quality for complex cases for custom predictions, right? So uh, this actually enhanced the performance for, for the specific models like the churn model, like the CLT file models, specifically these uh, using the behavioral profiles. Mm, but in case of other models also, uh, you will have uh, more performance, more quality of the results. So, in overall, these enhancements ensure that, uh, in my opinion, ensure that uh, our uh, A products still continue to, uh, to, to to deliver top tier performance. Mm, and I uh, and I hope actually that uh, will help you still achieve uh, the business goals. Uh, even more effectively. So thank you. This is this is all from my side, um, and I'm passing the mic to Kuba. Kuba. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for such a, a great uh, material uh, showing the progress of work in this quarter. Uh, we had a lot of interesting feats and improvements. But that's not all, because if you want to find out what we have planned for the next third uh, quarter, please visit the website roadmap.synrise.com. And um, now we have a few minutes um, for questions. If you have some, please ask, uh, ask us now. OK, if you don't have any questions, uh, you can uh, also ask ask them later if you will come up with some. Uh, but for now, this is uh, all for uh, for today from us. Uh, thank you very much for attending our meeting and see you uh, next meeting.